World Builders Anvil, Episode 24, World Building Cultural Evolution. Don't know where to start building your fantasy world? Do you need more? Does it make sense? Forget any worries and become a crafter of imagination. This is the place that will help prime your mind. Now, it's time to heat up the forge, break out the mithril ingots and hammer. Welcome to the World Builders Anvil. I'm your host, Jeffrey W. Ingram. Let's sup from the mug of Java and build. Hello, my name is Jeffrey W. Ingram, and I'll be your host once again for the World Builders Anvil. Today's topic, world building cultural evolution. That's right, I'm back to evolution already, but this time it will hopefully be a little less controversial as I'm just talking about the evolution of cultures and societies specifically. There are four different areas I like to look at, and these areas are not necessarily good or bad, but they will de facto have an effect on a culture as it moves through time. The first area I want to look at is separation. Things that will cause separation in a cultural group. So early on, we're a hunter-gatherer tribe, and we're, we're moving through our tribal grounds, and let's say, for instance, we decide to settle down and become agricultural. There is a chance that not all the people in the culture will want to settle down and become agricultural. So they continue to stay out and move around and do their hunting. That will start to separate those two groups of tribes into two different cultures. And it might not be one generation, but probably within one or two generations, there'll be similar but different cultures. However, that's really just the tip of the iceberg. Other things that could happen are changes in religion. This will be a big one to split a culture up right away. Not always create new cultural groups, but definitely at a minimum subgroups within a culture. Changes in religion can be huge, especially depending on the way the two religions decide to interact with each other. If there are two, two religions that can coexist, let's say like Taoism and, and Buddhism, then there will be an impact to the culture, but it won't be the same as in you have Christianity taking over a Hellenistic pagan culture. And the big difference is there is if one of the cultures says there is a path to be closer to God, it will not tolerate deviation. And it might not be a violent reaction, but it could be constant proselytization. Or there are other techniques which could interfere with the other religion in the group. Or perhaps if the culture has a huge tradition with like this religion from the Stone Age and they've stuck with it to the Iron Age, they're probably less likely to accept a religion that will not accept their religion back. So you're going to have conflict in both directions. And on top of that is, especially once a culture moves into the area of the state, and I'll get more into this when I talk about state evolution, religion is a tendency to be used by the state to legitimize itself in the eyes of the people through the God or God that they have. So religious shifts can have a huge impact on a culture. And now it could be largely the culture just changes the religion and that will change some of the rituals and get rid of or adapt some of the old uh, cultural rituals. However, it it could be more severe where you have a cultural split and you now have two two different ethnicities, one of which is Muslim and one of which is Christian. Physical separation. This kind of goes back to where I was talking about with the tribe splitting up because one wants to hunter-gatherer and the other part of the tribe wants to farm. It could be a little bit different than that too. It doesn't have to be that exact thing, but potentially as a tribe migrates throughout areas, let's say the proto-cultural group of the Indo-Europeans have many different cultures throughout them because there's some base connection of, of language and sound and possibly even beliefs. But as cultural groups settled into different areas, the beliefs slowly adopted to that area. And the further apart they are, the more likely their cultures are to be completely alien looking today, even though they have the same root culture. Social separation. This could come 
out from something as little as Western Mass versus Eastern Mass. And probably at some point, Western and Eastern Mass had one cultural group, people of Massachusetts. And over time, the people of Western Massachusetts feel isolated from the people in Boston and Eastern Mass. They either feel like they are being, they're forced to supplement them or for whatever reason, they start feeling resentment back towards the, the central part of the culture. So because of the social separation and even today where there's not really much of a physical separation between Eastern and Western Mass, it's just an hour or two apart the max. There's a feeling of a secondhand status for a lot of people who live in Western Massachusetts. Not all of them, but enough to where they don't feel the same as people in Boston. Now, in that circumstance, is probably a, a, a cultural subgroup. However, if you want to take that to a more meaningful conclusion, you can to where you have an upper class culture versus a lower class culture. If you really want to focus in on sort of a culture war type of demographic in a story. You could definitely take it to that level, I think. Mass immigration. This could be in or out of a cultural group. So uh, you see this a lot in the United States where you have a lot of different people who've migrated here over the time. And for the most part, whenever a new cultural group comes in, the first generation, two or three, kind of struggle and adapt into the new culture. But, you know, after several generations, after several generations, they really become one with the culture. And now they've changed the major culture to adapt what the society as a whole thinks makes it better. However, uh, their cultural evolution will change from where they came from. So even if they try and hold on to traditions of where they came from, they'll probably become isolated in time from which they move. So if you have a, a mass migration from the 1800s Italy to the United States. Some of the food types are going to pull some from the, the culture they live within now. And it's also going to hold on to some of the traditional values and the version of the language that they left that country with. So in that country, they're going to continue evolving the Italian culture in Italy. The culture, the Italians that moved to America, the ones that maintained their Italian heritage, their cultural roots are probably more closely aligned to Italians of the 1800s than to Italians of today. And that's what I talk about. I talk about mass immigration, where when you have a large shift in immigration, when you have a large shift in immigration, even if they try and hold on to their old traditional values, it's not going to happen. They're going to gain some from where they moved to. They're actually changing the major culture around them as well. And then they're going to pull in the cultural variations, or I'm sorry, then they're going to stop pulling in new cultural variations from where they came from. And also, if you have a real big migration, like, let's say, Irish coming to America, where in a short period of time, lots of Irish moved over here, it's going to change that culture in a way with, one, how they view where the people move to, and two, the culture is going to try and address the changes to survive. It, it's an entity that's trying to survive much like, much like an individual. It's not going to capitulate and go away. It's just going to sit there and go, okay, maybe our culture needs to change some of the way it looks. And maybe it won't be right away. But over time, mass migration will affect a little bit where it came from, and that culture will change, and where they arrive to. Growth. There are things that can make a culture grow. One new content. Let's say you're in a culture that the only people you've ever known are the people in your culture. No other races, no other cultures. And all of a sudden, a migration starts happening to where a different cultural group moves in close to proximity with where you are. That's going to have an effect on you. Besides determining who likes each other, who does not like each other, your culture is really going to adapt no matter what your response is to them because it has a new stimulus that it has to explain. Another one is once that's happened, you start fighting wars and all of a sudden you take over that other culture because they're heretics, let's say. That's going to change your culture as well, too. It's going to actually draw the two cultures closer together. And not right away, but over the course of a couple generations, 
that culture group that was beaten is going to actually change the culture that has taken it over. Some of its rituals will become rituals of the new culture. And this does not matter if the cultural group does not actually accept the one they've conquered. It's still going to have an impact on the culture. How are they going to deal with the people who are left behind from the land they've taken over? They need to know that. Magical technology growth will also change a culture. The ability to accomplish stuff, the more free excess food a culture has, will give the culture the ability to grow into new areas that hasn't been able to before. So any changes in your ability to acquire stuff through magic or technology will definitely impact the culture. Now, declining. Some of these are the reverse of growth, like subjugation. If you're subjugated, you're going to lose part of what your culture was and could in time just become part of the culture that's taking you over. It is the inverse of taking land from another culture. Relocation. This has a tendency historically to eradicate cultures. And a lot of times empires, especially in the Middle East, I know for certain, and probably in other parts, did the same thing where if they had a rebellious part of their empire, they would just take the population, split them up, and move them out across the empire, and the culture would disappear. This is not always true. Look towards uh, the Hebrews who uh, survived that. But for the most part, when cultures get relocated, they disappear. And they probably will still have an impact on a greater culture, but it depends on how much they're separated and spread out across an empire. A genocide, I think, will impact both cultures. The culture that's made the decision to eradicate another culture or race or whatever, or especially the race that has been, that has had genocide committed upon them. Once you've had genocide committed upon you, you'll probably end up becoming more defensive minded, even if that comes out in offensive action. Even if that comes out in a more offensive action, it won't matter because your mindset is, well, to defend ourselves, we have to conquer our new neighbors because they will try and kill us too. It might lead to revolutions. It could lead to the extinction of, obviously. However, it's very hard to get rid of all of a certain cultural group through murder. And another thing that can have a huge impact on a culture is the creation or the proximity of a major power. So if you are a small tribe in Gaul, and Rome conquers southern Gaul, that will impact your culture. Do you start Romanizing? Do you start trading with Rome? Do you try and ally with them? Or do you become bitter enemies of Rome? And these are all decisions your culture group will have to make to determine how can we survive this great power who sooner or later we are going to come into collision with. And now the last area I like, I like to look at is hand of God. Hand of God are these big things that just happen. And I'm not talking about minor incidents of these things here, but about major, major instances. So drought. Um, this will really screw up a culture very quickly. You need, typically, as humans at least, you need more water than food. And because of that, a prolonged drought will not only potentially change the culture, it can create new races. There's a documentary I I watched called I think I think it was called the Human Spark. And one of the theories they put forward, if I'm hopefully remembering the right documentary here, is that it was a huge drought caused by the Ice Age, which allowed the Homo sapiens who survived in Africa to start thinking ahead. Because the ones that couldn't think ahead and plant jugs of water when there was excess later on would not have water and would die. So it sort of created the human ability to see beyond what is happening today to something that might or might not be a problem later on, but to prepare for the future. And really, there go creating an imagination that would allow you to see potential outcomes. Famine, kind of the same thing, but longer. Uh, a famine for a generation will probably hurt a population, but not a lot. Oh, well, for a generation, it would hurt a lot. However, but for a season. A season will probably make you short of food, especially the less prepared you are. You'll have a certain number of deaths, but it won't be major. But you start going two, three, four. The longer the famine lasts, the worse this becomes. It can cause you to become warlike. When you start getting hungry, you, you think crazy thoughts. 
and you're more likely to act upon them. You're more likely to see images of your God telling you to go attack your neighbor who you know who has food. It is their work with the bad part of the religion that allows them to have food. So it is your duty to go in that city state next to you and take their food. Food screws with your mind. Hunger will screw with you as an individual quicker than it will as a culture, but it will affect a culture over time. Another one are major disasters. And I'm not talking about like a Hurricane Sandy, uh, which that's a big bad hur hurricane did a lot of damage. I'm talking about if you're the Binonians having a tidal wave smack in and destroy your culture. That will not only affect your culture, that will affect all the cultures around you who try and fill in the vacuum of your culture being wiped out. And even if your culture is not wiped out, it might be quickly subjugated from enemies. There could be any number of consequences. But major disasters, earthquakes that level your capital cities and destroy your ability to make arms and armaments, volcanoes, probably, as much as earthquakes. But earthquakes and volcanoes, I think, quickly get out distance and even tidal waves because the, the larger the landmass is once it becomes a state, the harder it is for the entire thing to be brought down by a major event. But it's something you have to look at uh, whenever you have major events that happen. And disease. Disease often goes with the other ones and makes the other ones worse. So you have a bad earthquake, which causes a bunch of people to get sick, which causes more people to get sick. And they could take the major earthquake and make it worse. Or obviously lead to the zombie apocalypse, which is every other story that comes out today. The rating for this episode. The rating for this episode is basic. You need to know how your culture has been affected by the things that have happened to it. So. That leads me right into the world building task for the day, which is look at the history of a culture in your world and list the events that caused the culture to change. And the reason it's important to know these events is it might impact or come to the thought of characters in your current story. The real world task for the day. Say thank you when people do something to help you. And this is not only to be polite to people who you interact with on an infrequent basis, basis but this is especially pointed at your family, friends, and loved one. Say thank you. You should be as respectful to them as anyone else. And when you say thank you, even for minor things that they do to help you, that they would do no matter what, this helps reinforce that you appreciate the activities that they are performing for you. So don't forget to say thank you. The tease for this episode is fantasy cultural traits. I'll see you there. And as always, make sure to go to Garduel.com. That's G-A-R-D-U-L.com for the show notes. It'll be under Podcasting, World Builders, and That's a great place to get all of the information from the episode that you've just listened to and to see all the resources that we've talked about in this episode. Thanks for joining us this episode of the World Builders Anvil. Please be sure to rate and review us in iTunes, and please help get the word out to your friends about our show. And join me, Jeffrey W. Ingram at Garduel.com to see the progress of my world and learn why I made the choices I did. And please contact me and let me know the topics you would love to hear in the future. Now strike, why the myth rolls high.